Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. This is 58 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam. Today we're going to be focusing on volume. So we're going to look at how to find the volume of prisms and cylinders. Um, if you've got a code Maths revision card, card number 89 will be a useful one for you as well. So in today's video, we're going to go through how to find the volume. So we're going to look at how to find the volume of things like triangular prisms and cylinders and things like that. There'll be some questions for you to try as well. And they're usually quite nice, those questions, which is find the volume of such and such. And also it could be find the length of it if they give you the volume. But also, would there be some questions that might be in our context? So it might be perhaps you've got um, a prism and it's being filled with water or something at a certain rate. How long will it take to fill? Or it could be that you could be given a question where it might be mixing up volume and density. Perhaps you know the density of the material and you've got to find the mass of the object. Um, it could be perhaps you've got algebra involved and you're doing a question towards the end of the paper where there might be some algebra involved within there as well. So I'm going to be looking at volume today. We're going to look at some of our questions. I highly recommend you have a look at the practice questions below. And then also you'll come to this topic of volume and other topics such as density and things like that. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by finding the volume of a prism. So to find the volume of a prism, we find the cross-sectional area, so that's the area of the cross-section, and you multiply by the length of the prism. So if we wanted to find the volume of this triangular prism, we find the area of this triangle, so there, this triangle at the front, and then we just multiply by how long the prism is. So we're gonna find the area of this triangle, so to find the area of a triangle, we do half the base times the height, so we're gonna do half of, and we could either do half of seven, and then multiply that by five, or we could do seven times five, and then half it. So I'm gonna do half of seven times five, so seven times five is equal to 35. So we're gonna do a half of 35. And a half of 35 is equal to 17.5 meters squared. So the area of the front of this triangular prism is 17.5 or 17 and a half meters squared. Now to find the volume, we're gonna do the area, which is the cross-sectional area, which is 17.5. And then we're just gonna multiply by how long the prism is, which is four. And if we do 17.5 multiplied by four, we'll find the volume of this triangular prism. So 17.5 multiplied by four is equal to 70. So 70 meters cubed. So the volume of this triangular prism is 70 meters cubed. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So here we've got a prism and feel free to press pause and find the volume of this prism now. Okay, so if we wanted to find the volume of this prism, so the cross section of the prism is a trapezium. So we need to find the area of a trapezium. And think back to our previous videos where we found the area of a trapezium. The area of a trapezium is equal to a half, a plus b, which is the two parallel sides, multiplied by the height. So we're gonna do the two parallel sides added together, so it's gonna be five plus 11. We're gonna half that, and then we're gonna multiply by h, the distance between them, which is eight. So let's do that, so it's gonna be half, the two parallel sides added together, so it's gonna be five plus 11, and then we're gonna multiply by h, the distance between them, which is gonna be multiplied by eight. So it's gonna be five plus 11 is equal to 16. So half of 16 multiplied by eight. And then half of 16 is eight. So we've got eight multiplied by eight, which is equal to 64. So it's gonna be 64 centimeters squared. So that's the area of the cross section there of that trapezium. And then we just need to multiply by how long the prism is. And the prism has got a length of 17 centimeters. So we just need to do get the volume. We're gonna do 64 multiplied by 17. And we can do that in our calculator. 64 multiplied by 17 is equal to 1,088 centimeters cubed. So that's the volume of that prism. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got a triangular prism and a cuboid, and we're told the volume of this triangular prism and the cuboid are equal to each other. Find x, which is the length of the cuboid. So feel free to press pause and work out the length of this cuboid now. Okay, so if I was to do this question, the first thing I would do is work out the volume of the triangular prism. So, so for the triangular prism, we want to find the area of the cross section, and the cross section is this triangle. So we're going to find the area of this triangle, and then multiply that by 20. So to find the area of the triangle, we're going to do half the base times the height, or we could do the base times the height and then half it. So I'm going to do 5 times 8, which is equal to 40, and then half it is 20. So the area of this triangle will be 20 centimeters squared. Let's show that. So half of 8 times 5, that's the area of the triangle. 8 times 5 is 40, so it's a half of 40, and a half of 40 is equal to 20, so 20 centimeters squared. So that's the area of this triangle. Now we just need to multiply by how long the prism is, which is 20. So if we do the volume is equal to 20, multiply by 20, which is equal to 400 centimeters cubed. So the volume of this prism, this triangular prism, is 400 centimeters cubed. And if you've got that, well done. Now what we need to do is we need to find the length of this cuboid. Now we're told the volumes are equal, so that means the volume, if the volume of this one is 400 centimeters cubed, the volume of this one is 400 centimeters cubed cubed. So that means for the volume of the cuboid, we do the length multiplied by the width multiplied by the height, or if you think about it, it's the area of the cross section. So multiplying these two together gives us the area of this uh, rectangle, and then multiply by how long it is. So in other words, if we multiply 3.2 by 5 by x, we're going to get 400. 5 multiplied by 3.2 
multiplied by x is equal to 400. So let's work this out. 5 multiplied by 3.2 is 16 times x would be 16x is equal to 400. And dividing by 16 would give us x is equal to 25. So it means that x is equal to 25 centimeters. The length of that cuboid is 25 centimeters. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. So this time we've got a cylinder. We want to find the volume of the cylinder. So again, we want to find the area of the cross section. So there, the cross section. The cross section of the cylinder, if you slice it, will be a circle. So the cross section of the cylinder is a circle. So we're going to find the area of the circle using pi r squared. And then we're going to multiply by the length or the height of the cylinder. So we're going to do the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared, the area of the cross section, multiplied by the height of it or the length of it. So I'm going to just call it h, the height. So the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h. So that means if we want to find the volume of the cylinder, we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius. So that's the radius of the circle, which is 3 squared, multiplied by the height of the cylinder or the length of it, which is equal to 14. And if we do this, we get pi multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by 14 is equal to 126 pi, or is a decimal, 395 point eight four zero six seven four four and so on centimeters cubed and we can round that let's round the two decimal places that'll be three hundred ninety five point eight four centimeters cubed to two decimal places and if you got that well done Okay, let's have a look at another volume of a cylinder question. So here's a cylinder. Can you find the volume of the cylinder? Now, this is a non-calculator question, so put your calculator down and find the volume of the cylinder and give your answer in terms of pi. So to find the volume of a cylinder, the volume is equal to pi r squared h, the area of this cross-section, the area of the circle, multiplied by the height or the length of it. So we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius. Now, the diameter of the circle is equal to 4 centimeters. So that means the distance halfway across it will be 2 centimeters. So we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius of the circle, which is 2 squared, multiplied by the height of it, which is 10. Now remember, this is a non-calculator question, so we can't use our calculator at this point. So we're going to do, remember our order of operations, we're going to do our squaring first. So 2 squared is 4, so that's pi multiplied by 4, multiplied by 10. And then 4 times 10 is 40, multiplied by pi, where we put the 40 in the front, so 40 pi centimeters cubed. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, now this is a calculator question, and we're told the volume of the cylinder is 6,000 centimetres cubed. Find x, which is the radius of the cylinder. So press pause now and work out the radius of the cylinder. Okay, with the volume of a cylinder, the volume is equal to pi r squared h. So pi multiplied by the radius squared, multiplied by the height of it. So there, the circle multiplied by the height of the cylinder. So the volume is equal to 6,000. So we've got 6,000 equals pi multiplied by the radius squared. Well, the radius is x, so it's going to be x squared multiplied by the height of it, which is 12. Okay, so we've now got 6,000 equals pi multiplied by x squared multiplied by 12. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the 12 and the pi together. So that'll be 12 pi and then put it in front of the x squared. So I'd get 6,000 equals 12 pi, just putting the 12 and the pi together and then putting the x squared at the end. Now I want to find out what x is, the radius of the cylinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 12 pi to begin with to get rid of this 12 pi. So I'm going to divide the left hand side by 12 pi and I'm going to divide the right hand side by 12 pi. So on the left hand side, if we do 6,000 divided by 12 pi, we get that's equal to 159.1549431 and so on. And that's equal to x squared because we divided by 12 pi to get rid of the multiply by 12 pi so we're just left with x squared. Now we don't want the radius squared we want just the radius so we're not going to square root to find out what x is. So x is equal to the square root of 159.1549431 and so on and that's on my calculator display so I can just press the square root of answer and press equals and that's equal to 12.615 and so on and let's just round that to one decimal place so that'll be 12.6 centimeters to one dp and that's to one decimal small place and that's it we found the radius of that cylinder okay let's have a look at our next question so our next question says a solid metal triangular prism so this is a solid metal triangular prism and it's melted down and the metal is used to create a solid metal cube so a solid metal cube and we've been asked to find x the side length of the metal cube so you might encounter volume questions in a context so it could be questions like this where you've got something's melted down and then it's uh, another shape's formed out of it it could be perhaps that you're filling up a container and you've got to find the volume of the container and find out how long it would take to fill up and we'll look at a question like that in a minute it could even include density where Perhaps you have to find the volume of a solid shape. You know the density of the material, and you might need to find the mass of it, and so on. So let's have a look at this question. We're told the solid metal triangular prism is melted down, and the metal is used to create a solid metal cube. And feel free to press pause and to find the side length of this cube. 
So if we find the volume of this triangular prism, we'll then know the volume of the cube, and then we can find the side length by cube root in it. So let's find the volume of the triangular prism. So we want to find the area of the front, this triangle, the cross section. So the area of the triangle is half the base times the height. So the base of the triangle is nine, the height of the triangle is four. The six is a diagonal, we don't actually need it. It's a bit of a red herring, so we don't need this six here. So we're gonna find the area of this triangle. So we're gonna do half the base times the height. So that's half of nine times four. And nine times four is 36. So that's a half of 36. And a half of 36 is 18. So that's 18 centimeters squared. So that's the area of the cross section. We now need to times out how long the prism is, which is 12 centimeters. So 18 multiplied by 12 is equal to 216 centimeters cubed. So the volume of this triangular prism is 216 centimeters cubed and that means it's 216 centimeters cubed of metal and that means that whenever this metal cube is formed this cube is formed out of metal then what you will find is its volume is the volume of this will be equal to 216 centimeters cubed that's the volume we want to find the side length so remember for the volume of a cube we do the length times the width times the height and that's going to be x times x times x so you've got x cubed is equal to 216 if you want to find the side length you're just going to cube root so we're going to do the cube root of 216 and the cube root of 216 16 is equal to 6. So the side length for this is 6 centimeters, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So our last question says, an empty paddling pool, so this is a paddling pool, and it's empty, and it's being filled at a rate of 3 litres per second. So there's perhaps a hose put in it, and it's being filled up at 3 litres per second. So every second, 3 litres is going into that uh, paddling pool. And the question says, how long does it take to fill the pool? Give your answer to the nearest minute. Okay, and feel free to press pause and to try this question now yourself and see how you get on. So what we need to do is we need to find the volume of the paddling pool. And it's a cylinder, so we need to find the volume of the cylinder. So the volume of the cylinder, now we've got here meters and centimeters, so let's change this into centimeters. So 2.5 meters would be 250 centimeters. So we know the radius of the paddling pool, and we know the height of the paddling pool, and the volume would be equal to pi r squared h. That's pi r squared, the area of the cross section, times the height. So we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius squared, so that's 250 squared multiplied by the height, which is 90. And if we do pi multiplied by, so pi multiplied by 250 squared multiplied by 90, we get a volume of 17,671,458.68 centimeters cubed. So that's the volume of the cylinder, the volume of the paddling pool. Now we've been asked how long does it take to fill? That's been filled at a rate of three liters per second. Now one liter is equal to, one liter is equal to 1,000 centimeters cubed. So that means that every single second, three liters is going in, so 3,000 centimeters cubed of water is for going into that pool every single second. So if we divide this, the volume of the pool, by 3,000, we'll see how many seconds it would take to fill the pool. So let's do that. So let's take our 17,671,458.68 and divide that by 3,000 and see what we get. So that's equal to 5,890.486225 and so on seconds. So that's how many seconds it would take to fill that paddle and pull. Now we've been asked to find how long it takes in minutes. So let's divide this by 60. So if we do 5,890.486 and so on and divide that by 60, that'll tell us how many minutes it would take to divide by 60. And that'd be equal to 98.174 and so on minutes. And we've been asked to give our answer to the nearest minute. So this is 98.17. So we've run that, that'd be 98 minutes so to the nearest minute it take 98 minutes to fill that pool 98 minutes and that's it and if you got that well done and that's it so in this video we've looked at volume i really hope you found it useful we've gone through some questions and hopefully you got those right in the description below i've got a link to the practice questions for you to do more practice as well so keep up the hard work there's 58 days going to your gcse maths exam and um, if you have found this video useful please like and subscribe to the youtube channel if you know anyone that might find these videos useful feel free to share it with them and um, it'd be quite useful because if you share this with them then they might it's a bit like sharing with someone a good box set where there's loads of episodes to catch up on and get stuck into they can have loads and loads of videos to catch up with so uh, you know feel free to share that the, the 100 days uh, playlist with them as well but hopefully you find this video useful i'll see you tomorrow for the next video cheers bye